What's up, movie cheers, we're not fans. It's me again. I'm back for another reaction. This time I figured I should probably get ahead of myself and start doing reactions early in the week instead of, you know, all at once and at the very last second. And as you can probably hear, I got the air conditioner on because it's really hot and I'm wearing a hoodie and not just any hoodie, I'm wearing the Den hoodie because this uh, Shmoda mentions between Jessica Schloth of The Den and Frankie Alvarez from The Usual Suspects. Gotta be honest, I wasn't too impressed with Frankie Alvarez's first um, debut match. I mean, he did win, but he was this close to being the first TKO victim of the exchange. Uh, it just so it just happened a certain way where uh, uh, Brother Lomas just uh, blanked down on his last uh, three questions. Happens to everybody, but uh, yeah, as you can clearly see who I'm supporting. I'm, I'm obviously I'm a Den fan, and uh, yeah. Uh, the usual suspects exist. <laughs> That's my uh, assessment of the situation. Now, uh, yeah, obviously I will be competing myself. I will be participating myself. I have a spare marker just in case this one craps out on me. I have. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this if today is the day where I finally put this older marker to bed. But uh, yeah, let's uh, start uh, the match and see who uh, is going to win. Here we go. Trivia Schmodown. I'm Christian Harloff, joined as always by Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Mark Ellis, we have so much great talent that has come into the Schmodown this season through auditions, through people reaching out and finding these brand new stars. And that is definitely true of today. We have Jess Jessica Schloth versus Frankie Alvarez. This is a match that uh, I didn't know how much I wanted it until I saw both the names. I said, wait a minute. Want to know? Want to know? And then you get Rick Raddus out there screaming and yelling how he wants the winner. I mean, this is already, oh. this is a, a, a big story, and they're not even four or five months into this league. No, you get Schloth and you get Alvarez from different corners of the East Coast of the United States. And like you said, Christian, it has been a season with a ton of rookie talent. By far the most rookie talent since dare I say season one when everybody was a rookie the the crowd is saying okay we get it with the old veteran goofballs we want some new <laughs> blood in here well that is what Jess and Frankie and their kill have brought into this league and when you look at their managerial components here because you have Sam Levine and Kate Mulligan they're going to be making appearances today coaching their young rookies through a match that they both dearly want to win not just to face possibly Radis, but to make their mark in the schmodown make their way in their career that is young, but already full of promise. A lot of promise, and they both had great victories. Jessica Schloth had had a really tough match against Beth May, stayed in the pocket, won the match, and then Frankie Alvarez, who had a, a, an equal, a scrap against Brother Lomas. This crop of rookies that we have this season, they know the game, they know what they want to do, and they want to keep moving. So this is a, this is a big match for both these, both these competitors. Yeah, I'd encourage anybody that if you want to know the medal that these rookies show, just look at who they've already beat. Beth May and Brother Lomas, two of the most touted rookies coming into this draft class. And so if you can defeat them, you're doing something right in the movie trivia schmodown. But enough yapping from us. Again, we're goofball. Well, at least one of us is a goofball. The other one hasn't been booked on that program as of my agents telling me no. Her name is Molly the Wonder Dog. So let's see how we got here with these two competitors, with their factions, with who's calling them out right now. We're coming to a different type of competitor in this season. They know the stakes now because both Beth and Jess didn't get shook after opponent's choice on both their end. They both stayed in there. They both hit their five when it was necessary. They played like pros. They are in the big leagues now and prove why with this match today, Christian. Jessica, the sleeper, 
people can say, you know, oh, she's so soft spoken. Like you guys aren't in these study sessions. She's the very opposite of that. I but trust me. <laughs> it makes you blow your hair. Is this thing is this thing on? Just wanted to make sure. I mean it's your mic. Frank the Animal Alvarez, back at you. After I dealt with that first internet weirdo, people only spoke about him. They forgot about, you know, the winner. I think anyone that's in my way is going to have to, you know, I think I proved today they're going to have to put up or shut up. I'm not going to succumb to mind games. Walked away with a big fat W. And I am back. Uh, like I said to him, 421. I love it. Three. So there's no whiteboards. You you either know it or you don't. I am robot. That is correct. That yeah, is correct. I am robot. Two points. I had that's how he won the match until the playback. Um, until I watched the match myself. Can I curse on here? Absolutely. I was <laughs> mortified. <laughs> I, you know, but if you sit there and, and the competitive nature gets to you a little bit, you could you can make some silly mistakes. I'm focused on Jess, the sleeper, Schlope. Fact of the matter is, I saw that match with Beth May. I know her knowledge. I know her work ethic. She, she, she clawed her way to a very, very impressive victory against a very tough opponent. But she's going to have to do that, plus a little more, in order to get past the animal. I'll tell you right now, I smell blood in the water. And Radis, I know you're watching. Shut your mouth. Because I'm going to deal with Jess first, and you best believe I'm coming for you. And I'm going to show you every bit of movie trivia knowledge that I have. And you better hope that everything that you have is enough to beat me. I am robot. <laughs> yeah, makes more sense now. Two and oh, here I come. Well, as you see, they both are, it, it, and to no one's surprise, I think the majority of the talking there is done by both Kate and Sam, and mm -hmm. rightfully so. They're proud of their rookies. They're proud of what they've done. But, but I didn't even I, see the Kate curious in that promo. thing here is Alvarez wants Radis bad, but does that well, mean that he's overlooking Sloth in order to get to Radis? That is the big first. question here. Is he too concerned about taking on the Rager when he should be taking on the Sleeper here? Because this is going to be, this is not going to be an easy match for either one of these competitors because Sloth seems focused. She seems like she's ready to go. So is the distraction of Radis maybe something that Radis wanted to do in the first place? Well, we're going to find out in just a second. Interesting point to look at in these matches, Christian, because we see it's not necessarily your freshman match, your first ever debut, where you're not really sure how to feel after you answer a question correctly or incorrectly after a big swing in points, possibly in round two. It's that sophomore match where you've tasted victory, and then all of a sudden you get into trouble early in round one, you're not sure how to recover. Let's keep an eye on these two competitors and how focused they can maintain, even if something goes awry. That's also going to be a lot of pressure on the den and the usual suspects you ready to get going oh i'm pumped for this one yeah ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia showdown introducing first representing the dead with a record of one win no defeats she is Jessica the Sleeper Sloth! Jessica Schloth, you are here, and look at that. That is a that is a wall next to you. That is a wall next to you. That is <laughs> Look at the wall. That's a so, door. Jessica, I <laughs> you you know, this is it's been a couple about a month or so, or two months since your first match against Beth May. You're back here against Frankie Alvarez. You watched his match. What do you think about the animal coming into this match? Um, yeah, I think we kind of had similar debut matches. You know, maybe not the best we could do, but 
Um, so I'm not underestimating him. I certainly hope he's not underestimating me because I am working really hard and I think I'm pretty prepared for this match, hopefully. Um, but yeah, he seems like cool dude. I don't know. What. <laughs> I would say that, except for that whole New York Yankees affiliation. Now, Jess, let's talk about how it's been for you since your match with Beth May, because you got a W. How does it feel to have all the fans say, hey, this keep an eye out for Sloth here. She's doing well. Do you buy into that at all, or do you try to stay just focused on the next match and get rid of all the hype and the noise surrounding you? I mean, I still feel like even though I won, people... I, I appreciated all the support and the nice comments, but I don't think that there was this big, you know, um, thing that came out of it, so I'm still just preparing it as if oh. it were my first or my 10th, I don't know. How's so working with Kate? It seems like this season, this, a lot of people say it. I've known Kate for a while. It seems like match. she's the most Sorry. invested that she's ever been. And she really is working with the competitors. How's it been like working with Kate Mulligan? Kate's great. Yeah, she takes care of us and like checks in and is very involved like anyone who thinks she isn't. Like she definitely is. Um, we would all say that and so i'm really happy that she's my manager because like i get that sense of support and connectedness awesome all right well good luck to you jess we'll see you in just a moment thank you and her opponent representing the usual suspects with a record of one win no defeats he is the animal Ranking Alvarez! How sweet it sounds. How sweet it sounds. Okay. Thanks for having me, boys. Of course, you are back. And I got to say, Frank, look, man, I, I, I don't know you that well, but I feel like we've known each other for a little bit now, and I know how the New York spirit works, and I'm curious. Uh, as Two we saw in your promo, as we've seen on your social, in the middle of the introduction of the player, that you are playing Rick Radis here today. Move me off completely. Slow. So, what is it about uh, Radis that's keeping you focused on him, and are you focused on on Schloed? I, I really hate. <sighs> Listen, sometimes. Radis is a pretender. All right, he's a pretender. He likes to come out here. He likes to play games. He likes to talk I mean, a lot of smack, and you know, try to get everyone. Two and you know, oh, oh, he's so fun. He's so saying. entertaining. That's all it is. It's a shtick. Guess what? When it comes to me, I'm the real deal, baby. All right? I'm not going to put on these fun little games to get people riled up. I'm the real thing. But don't 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 be confused, okay? I might hold a grudge just as well as the New York Yankees hold that grudge against the Houston Astros, but right now, if I sleep on the sleeper, I'm going to be in trouble. So I am 100% focused on Jessica Schlo. I, as an Orioles fan, still hold a grudge against uh, Jeffrey Mayer. But that's a different story altogether. Let's ask you about working with your faction, and in particular, your manager, Sam Levine. He knows a thing or two about baseball, as well as the movie trivia Schmodown. So what do you feel like you've gained from his tutelage or from your faction mate's support? Well, I mean, we have a really, uh, you know, passionate, knowledgeable group uh, over here at The Usual Suspects. And, uh, you know, I know that this season uh, has not... Uh, yeah, produced as prospect. much success uh, in 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 the in the points, you know, aspect of things, and maybe people can look at it and just say, "Oh, look at where they are in the rankings." But the fact of the matter is, is that in the schmodown, success is measured differently. And I can tell you that there is no other faction that is working as hard as the usual suspects. Uh, Sam will drop in just little tidbits of wisdom that you can't get anywhere else that are just going to sit in your head and blossom into the beautiful, beautiful flower that is going to help you win in this game. Last question before we get going here. Um, you mentioned obviously taking Jessica Schlo serious. What is it? What is the strategy like preparing for the sleeper? Well, I think it's just that in uh, preparing, you know, and not taking her lightly. I think, uh, you know, Jess put up one hell of a fight and did incredible against a, a tough competitor in Beth May. And uh, thinking that she's just going to roll over and take a loss is unwise so uh treating it as if i'm playing any other competitor out there uh, i i treat playing uh jess Schloth as if i was going up against you know a dan merle so um you know just going in with that mentality i think is going to help me today all right mark our competitors have arrived and now the rules of round number one 
There are rules and regulations to the Schmodown. Here they are for round Still. number one. The field of competition will hear eight questions from eight different corners of movie, trivia, Schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. Well, at least not in round number one. As soon as Christian or myself ask the question, you have 15 seconds to get that correct answer written down on whatever surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right or you heard it fine, you just need to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer. Use one of your JTE rules or just say, repeat the question. You also each have one challenge you may utilize at any point throughout the three round match. You may initiate the challenge. We'll bring in the managers. We'll all deliberate to our heart's content. And then it will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. Christian, we got an animal, we got a sleeper, and I have a sleeping animal just to my left. <laughs> well said. All right, we asked Frankie uh, Alvarez, are you ready? How fast Born does ready. his brain go? Jess, are you ready? I'm ready. Then let's get ready to Schmodown! Round number one, question number one, we're gonna start in the realm of animated films. Okay. The Illumination Studio franchise features the voice talents of Kristen Wiig, Jason Se Jason Siegel, Russell Brand, and Steve Carell. This Illumination Studio. <laughs> Correct. You literally beefed it on the first word. Happens. <laughs> oh, we don't get the clock it's here. It's a today. franchise, right? Yes. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Ben's down. Let's go to the animal first. Despicable Me. Yes. And let's go to Jess. Despicable Me. Oh, Jason Siegel in that franchise. Right. I don't Here remember. we go. We're off and running. I mean, Question two is in the world of when comic book Siegel movies. There's these little comic books, and they make big movies out of them. And here's a question about that for a point. Which comedic actor co-starred alongside Val Kilmer as the Riddler in Batman Forever? Accurate title there. Batman really is you know, sort of forever. That really goes away, just takes a nap. Apparently, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 coming back again. Five, four, three. Nice. Two, what? one. Ben's down. What? And we start this time with Jess. Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Yes, and Frank. Jim Carrey. Carry the Jim. We're all tied up, and now we're gonna go to question three. Horror slash thriller. What is the name of the demonically possessed doll in the Conjuring franchise that features in its own films? You know, speaking of Turtles too, Christian, I feel like you were right at that age where Vanilla Ice hit you hard, and I bet there's some embarrassing pictures we could all enjoy. No, not for that. Why would you I mean, put yes, that but not for that. Five, head. four, three, two, one. Oh, she's got a dense sticker on the whiteboard. I like it. Annabelle. Annabelle. Yes, and Jess. Annabelle. We are still tied, and Annabelle. we will get to question four. That's so right. Competitors perfect through three, somewhere. and your fourth category is in the world of action adventure flicks, and it is. Alicia Vikander plays the video game heroine Lara Croft in what? 2018 film. You're not giving up on that hat, are you, bud? No, I kind of like it. Didn't he say you know, that he can't I mean, find again, the other one? The so that's hat, why he's you still can wear wearing it. it. Four. Don't worry. Three. Can't find it. Two. One. Hands down. Hands up, please. And Jess. Tomb, Tomb Raider. Raider. Yes. And Frankie. I, said, I still know the cheat code. Tomb Raider. I, I, I that is correct. Now we're going to get to question ladder, five. Though. We're going to go to family films. The characters of Alex Pruitt, Uncle Frank, and Marv appear in what family franchise? The only cheat code that I still know by heart, I think I know Contra, but sometimes I get it wrong. It's I think it's five. It's easy to remember that one. Four. Stop bragging. Three. I only remember one two, cheat code, and it's one. the Hands down. And Hands up, which please. Which and this time is. we start with Frankie. Gremlins? Home Alone. Yes. Oh. Jess. Home Alone. So well, they both get it there, and it's five, also, five, as you get to question six. Yeah, these kids might know their stuff in the world of movies, movie. Christian. They're perfect, and now we get to the category of comedy. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> getting drier and drier by the day. Your question for a point. What 2009, excuse me, what 2008 comedy, 2008 features supporting performances from Jack Black, Jay Baruchel, Dana McBride, and Matthew McConaughey? Huh. Very excited about the year 2009 for some reason, but it is 2008. And? Hey, when you don't got it, you don't got it. Five. This time I'm playing. Three, two, one. Hands down, hands up. And this time we start with Jess. Is that Nacho Libre? It's incorrect. And Frankie? First Blood, Tropic Thunder. Yes. And Alvarez goes up by one as we get to our next question. This is question seven. Fantasy sci-fi. Matthew Vaughn directed what 2007 fantasy film that stars Charlie Cox, Robert De Niro, and Claire Danes? Now, if this was a question about Christian's head cannon, then the answer would be every movie ever made because Christian loves this guy. I do, but still. Can you repeat the question? Yes, we can. I love this Here movie so much. Matthew Vaughn directed what 2007 fantasy film that stars Charlie Cox, Robert De Niro, and Claire Danes? Also, Henry Cavill is in that movie before he was Superman. Way before. Giving up on Vaughn, huh? No. Not giving up on him. I just like to put words in your mouth. Like we used to do. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start this time with Frank. I always start confuse these two. Is it the Golden Compass? It is not. And Aha! I didn't know it. <laughs> Stardust! Or Stardust. Ha ha ha! I got a question they right, both so missed! No Things are getting interesting! Get to our also, next based question, on a Neil Gaiman book. Yeah, people love that Stardust. Could, Never made it on my radar, a but a lot of rom-coms do. And I bring that up because your category is rom-coms for your final know, round sure one on question. That. For a point, which actress stars in the romantic comedies The Holiday, The Other Woman, and Sex Tape? Well, I only know one actress who was in one of them. Head scratch the last those. couple ones here. Yeah. yeah right beat myself up for that Stardust one. Throwing some Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and we, this time we start with Jess. Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz. Yes, and Frank. Oh, actually, I knew that one. So it's still a one point game, seven six. Alvarez by one as we head into round number two. It is the wheel round, Mark. How does it go? Yeah, well, you intimated it's the wheel round of that wheel. It's full of fate and doom, but most of all, justice, because each competitor does get a spin at that there wheel. Once you do settle on a category, I got five four so questions far, emerge to you and only you, or at least to start. Because That's pretty much going to be the end points, of my points. But getting stealing is available more. in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us. For multiple choice, we're swell fellows. We'll give you four options, one of which we're told by the writer, smarter than us, is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. So it is a one-point lead for the animal, Christian. Both competitors looking spry early, but Alvarez gets the honor of uh, selecting whether he'd like to spin that digital wheel first and or defer by to his Greta opponent. I Listen, like I might be an animal, but I'm also a gentleman. So I'd like mm -hmm. to defer to Miss Schloth. 60 seconds, okay. Kate, starting now. <laughs> you look loose. You having fun? I am. Listen, there's a couple misses in the first round. The, it's, the match isn't over yet, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> this is this is where this is where we pull into the lead here in the second round. So let's have a great spin. You look loose. You are hitting all sorts. I mean, you had a couple of pulls there. Good for you, <laughs> sis. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Ladybird. Let's do this thing. Let us. Do you want to spin? Let's spin. Just chat. Should we just chat for a bit? I mean, we can just run down the clock if you want. Take you a quick sip of water. Yeah, take some water. Dug, 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 dug. Crash. I can't believe you broke the glass. <laughs> Hydration. Some cool. Just a fun. Hydrate or die. We could do some foley artist stuff. You know. <laughs> you know. You want to pretend to tap your fingers on the on the desk and I'll. Let's bring our wheel up. So here's the wheel. <laughs> And now here is a spin by Jess. And right. spin is in, Mark. And, and just what a gem Kate Mulligan is, Christian. Am I right? Hmm. Oh, yeah. 2010s. Just ended. Jim, you have 60 seconds to talk to your competitor. We know what we do at this one. Well, there's a lot of decades, and I've only been alive for a couple. 
but I have Bragger. been alive for this one. Bragger. Uh-huh. Me too, I So think. I was aware of movies by this point, so I think we should take it. I think we stay. Absolutely. Okay. This is one of the ones we talked about. I say we, we stay. I'm just going to walk into the other room now. All right. So, Jess, you chose to stay on 2010s. Uh, we are going to give you four questions in that realm. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Oh, let's make sure we can see the hands yep. from the competitors. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thank you. All right, here's the first question. Who directed 2018's Death Wish? Oh, I did say this would be Wait, the end that's... of my uh, points getting. Eli Roth. It's correct for two points. Question two. Who plays the character of Kyle Reese in Terminator Genesis? Is it Jai Courtney? Jai Courtney. Two more points. That's your boy, Christian. Yeah, he is now actually so strange enough. Well, not um, back then. Here is the next question. Okay. In the 2000 in film, Young Adult, Charlize Theron plays a ghostwriter that has written several books in what genre? Hmm, that's a tricky one. Let's go multiple choice. All right. Is it A, young adult, B, romance, C, mystery, D, thriller? I think young adult and romance is too easy of an answer. Hmm. Maybe mystery. I don't know. Thriller just seems a little too out there. And... Clearly, I haven't seen the movie, oh, by the, the way. Romance. <laughs> it is incorrect. Frankie, here, we're going to give you the... Question and the multiple choice options. In the 2011 steal, film well Young Adult, Charlize Theron plays a ghostwriter that has written several books in what genre? Is it A, Young Adult, B, Romance, C, Mystery, D, Thriller? I'd be crazy not to go with the Young Adult, A as an apple. That is correct for one really? point. Uh, the easy answer was right. the right one. And so that was question three. Here's question four. Hmm. Spike Jones directed Joaquin Phoenix in what film about falling in love with an AI system? Her. That would be the lovely movie, Her. That is correct for two more points. Spike so Alvarez gets a one point steal, but Sloth finds herself up by four. It is 12, 18. The clues and not Sam got 60 seconds so. starting now. Dude. It is crazy how much they look like, like each other. Because I know that right now you're angry at yourself for having missed Stardust. Quite a bit. Even though, even though you ended round one with a lead, it wasn't as big a lead as it could have been. And that, my friend, is the lament of the champion. That's <laughs> what you are. You are a champion. You are playing spectacularly well. That was a great steal. Okay? You're not going to give up any steals in your round two because we know this wheel inside and out. You are covered. You are playing great. Shake off the miss in round one. That means nothing. I am not worried. I am not going to harp on it. I always yep. confuse Stardust and the Golden Compass, but I'm ready to move forward. All right. Moving forward to that wheel, and here it is. Wheel is up, and here is Frankie Spin. <laughs> humid in uh, Jersey today? A little bit. A little humid. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. That's a shame. Stephen and King. It is Stephen King. Stephen King. 60 seconds. Stephen King. All right. I don't hate Stephen King. I know we don't hate it. Uh, I certainly don't hate it. Uh, I there's other things on here I love. Yep. Uh, so you know what? I'm feeling a little risky. You know, I can take a trip down to Atlantic City, or I can spin this wheel again. I think I'll go with the wheel. Let's do it. So you're spinning again? Yes, spin sir. Again. All right, here we go. Here's the spin. Now whatever Frankie lands on, he's got to keep Opponent's spinning choice. away Opponent. from no. Stephen King. Is that because he's a Kansas. Red Sox fan? Jody Foster. Jody Foster. Jody Foster. Brilliant. So, all right, so Jodie Foster will be the movies. All right, Mark, so now Frankie will get four questions in the realm of Jodie Foster. That's right, and just like Schloth had two or one point for multiple choice, if you're not feeling your Aaron Judge power, you can ask us for multiple choice, and we'll check down to Don Mattingly singles. Here we go. Four questions in the world of Jodie Foster. Your first one. Jodie Foster plays card-playing con artist Mrs. Annabelle Bransford in what 1994 Western? That's a tough one. 
I'm not even gonna try to guess. Multiple choice, please. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Bad Girls, B, Wyatt Earp, C, Maverick, or D, Wagons East? Wyatt Earp. I'm gonna go B as in boy, Wyatt Earp. That is incorrect. And so for a one point okay. steal, Jess, I'm gonna repeat the question and the options for a point. Jodie Foster plays card playing con artist, Mrs. Annabelle Bransford in what 1994 Western? Is it A, Bad Girls, B, Wyatt Earp, C, Maverick, or D, Wagons East? Be Maverick. Just like the fighter pilot, and that's a big one point steal for Schloth. We go back to Alvarez for a Maverick chance for two points in the world like of Jodie Foster. This is your second of four Shows questions. What I Frankie. Know about movies, right? Foster plays a character called the nurse who runs a secret emergency room for criminals in what 2018 film? I believe that is Hotel Artemis. Felt a little John Wicky, didn't it? That is correct for two points, and now Alvarez on the board here in round two. We pivot to his penultimate pivot! question in the wild world of Jodie Foster, sorry, sorry, and that is, Jodie Foster plays a radio personality who begins a quest for vengeance against those who assaulted her and killed her fiance, leaving a bloody trail across New York City in what film? It sounds like a different movie starring a different actress from a couple of years ago, but... Multiple choice, please. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, The Brave One, B, DJ, so C, no Vengeance, day. or D, No More Fear? His best case scenario it's a. is a tie. A is an apple. A is an apple is correct for a big point. Christian used to have a handbag that said The Brave One on it. And now yep. we go to your final question in the world of Jody Foster. This will be the last question Jody before Josh. we hit round three. Frankie, it is. This Neil Blomkamp film starred Jody Foster and Matt Damon. I believe that is Elysium. I liked it. Apparently nobody else did. But yes, you get two points. And now, just like that, it is going to be a, a 13 to 13 tied ball game going in to round number three. It is round number three. It is the final round. It is all tied up. And now we are going to get the rules of round number three, Mark. What are they? I'm getting word PJ like Elysium as well. In round number three, this is the round that will determine the match, lest we go to sudden death overtime. You will each hear three questions. These questions are to you and only you. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number three, but we do need some help from you. You're just gonna give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each competitor. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent because each one corresponds to a unique category of movie trivia, schmodown, mystery. JTE rules and challenges still apply. And so we go to Frankie Alvarez first by way of default. Frankie, you do have a tie, but you have the honor of giving us your three lucky numbers first. From one to 20, what feels fortunate? Eight. Four. 17. Eight, four, and seventeen for Frank, and let for meditate and Jess. let the numbers come to you. I'll do twelve, sixteen, eighteen. Twelve, sixteen, eighteen. All right, so we have eight, four, and seventeen for Frankie. Twelve, sixteen, eighteen for Jess. All right, and Jess has two JTEs left, and Frankie has all three. See, we got sixty seconds starting now. All right, buddy. I have to remind you of something very important, very crucially important. Hit me. You have never trailed in this match. That is true. Okay? You have never been behind. People, oh, is that true? He was behind you after he heard round two. Yes, well, he hadn't gone yet. That's the way. <laughs> yeah, that that's is. a... Uh, so you've I, never I trailed in this that. match, and I am proud of you, and you're not going to trail. Okay? You're going to answer the questions asked of you, and you're going to win. It's going to be that simple. We may be tied again at some point, but I am confident, my friend, that after all three round three questions, you will be the victor. You crushed ready? Jody Foster. You crushed her. And the police are after you. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Okay. It's so wrong in so many different um, ways. Will you remind me after this match, I got to cancel my palm reading with Sam Levine because he's terrible at predicting the future. Mm. Oof, remember when he told Frankie you, you weren't going to steal any? <laughs> and oh. you and then you yeah. did. Like on the very first Kind of awkward. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's got a really smart. Woo! 
Oh, well, that's got a sting. Listen, it's any you you were behind, and you just pulled up right next to him. So guess mm -hmm. what? This is when, yet again, Sam's future prediction doesn't come true. You are loose. You're playing smart. You're taking your time. You have two JTEs Very left. Strategic. Let's close the deal. Let's do it. Let's do it. Also, All right. you picked great numbers, and it seemed like Frankie was trying to remember what numbers were. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, let's All right. So our competitors are here. Jessica Schloth will go first. And oh, Mark, she cake. chose category 12, and that is in the realm of musicals. Musicalist. You're doing it, Christian. That is correct. For two points and for a two-point lead, your question, Jess. James Corden, Judi Dench, and Jason Derulo appear in what 2019 musical based off of a legendary Broadway show? Cats! The cat. The abomination of a movie that I sat through! This episode is correct through. for two points, Christian. Now I hate that I lead, know that and answer! And it's up to Alvarez to match. All right, so Alvarez, in order to tie the game, he chose category eight, and that puts him with horror. Oof. Horror movies. And I'm wearing act, and I'm actually points. wearing cats on my For the side. animal, on Frankie Alvarez, today. your question to tie. What is the name of the titular killer St. Bernard in the 1983 movie based on a novel by Stephen King? Cujo. That would be Cujo. Even I knew that. Come on. Only dog in cinema history we're not rooting for. That is correct for two points. We are once again tied I mean, yeah, and that so and the, back to Schloth. The dogs right, so from Schloth Oliver and Company. 16, and that the Doberman. Into fantasy sci-fi. And the Doberman from Up. Wow, this point. Oh, there are a Three lot of question. evil Dobermans in All right. meat, pop culture. As Christian said, Disney fantasy sci-fi is the category and the question for a three-point lead. What 2008 romantic fantasy film based on a story by F. Scott Fitzgerald features supporting performances from Taraji P. Henson, Jared Harris, and Tilda Swinton? That kind of sounds familiar, but I can't pull an answer. Could you repeat? Second one. All right, you have one JT we're remaining. The question, what 2008 romantic fantasy film based on a story by F. Scott Fitzgerald features supporting performances from Taraji P. Henson, Jared Harris, and Tilda Swinton? Is that the curious case of Benjamin Button? Christian, the sleeper has a three-point lead. Woo! That was a Whoa, great pull. I didn't know it was two thousand and eight. And now Alvarez, who chose category four, will try to tie the game with the category of McConaughey. McConaughey, McConaughey is hey, the got his category. Own category now. All right. All right. All right. All right. And another all right. All right. Frankie, to tie the lead of Schloth, your three-point question in the world of Matthew McConaughey, what is the name of the Matthew McConaughey film about a video store clerk who agrees to have his life filmed by a camera crew for a television show? Is that NTV? It is, and that means we are tied once again, Christian. The five pointers remain, and neither competitor blinking in round three. So they are tied up, and now in order to take a lead and force Alvarez to hit his five, Schloth needs to hit her five pointer, which is category 18, and that would be in the realm of romance. Realm of romance. Romantic Some of that movies. In my life. It is. <laughs> The question for five points and a five point lead. Kyle Chandler plays Kate Blanchett's estranged husband in this film by director Todd Haynes. Five, four. Repeat the question. Last one. All right. Question in the category of romance. Kyle Chandler plays Kate Blanchett's estranged husband in this film by director Todd Haynes. I 
the spectacular now. Incorrect. We were looking for Carol. Carol. Ah. <laughs> All right. So now Alvarez has an opportunity to win the game. If he hits the five pointer, he wins. However, if he misses, we are going to sudden death. All right. Here we go. So he chose category 17. We're talking biopics. I used to say biopics. People made fun of me. I now say biopics. And now that is the subject of your five point question, Frankie, for the win. And a 2 0 record in the movie trivia Schmodown. The question John S. Baird directed John C. Riley in what? 2010's biopic. Five, four, three. Repeat, please. First one. All right, you have two remaining. The question, John S. Baird directed John C. Riley in what 2010's biopic? Five, four, Three, two. Repeat, please. Second one. All right, the category is biopics. The question, John S. Baird directed John C. Riley in what 2010's biopic? Five, four. The Sisters Brothers? is incorrect we were looking for stan and ollie and christian oh, we have sudden yeah, death for the right. animal and the sleeper stan and all right ollie. so we are gonna find ourselves oh i forgot about that in movie. sudden death with schloth and so Alvarez. everybody else so and mark what okay. are the rules of sudden death well you each get spotted one jte rule and a challenge and when we get to the actual rules it's gonna feel a lot like a round one except a lot more pressure either christian or myself is going to ask a question worth a point to the field of competition so you need your writing surface and writing utensil handy because you will be writing down the answers you have 15 seconds to do so once we ask the question. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Because it is sudden death, it will work as thus. If both competitors get a correct answer and score the point, we'll move on to another question. If both competitors miss the question, we'll move on to another query. If one competitor gets it correct and the other does not, the correct answer or will be declared the winner of the match. All right, because we are all tied up once again, we are going to start with Sam. Yes, Frankie, you had some? I'm sorry, I, I blanked out for a second. Any JTs? One JT. 60 seconds, starting now. Like I said, brother, you have never trailed in this game, and you're not going to start now, okay? Shake it off. Yep. Shake it all off. Brand new ball game right now. Right yep. now, it's only about using the time you have given to you, using the JTE if you need it, and writing down your best attempt at an answer. No That's blank boards. all I ask of you. No blank boards. You got this, my friend. All right, let's do it. Right. 60 seconds, Kate, starting now. Um, Jess, uh, I know I already asked you to uh, remind me about canceling the palm reading, but will you also remind me to send um, Sam this uh, this little rag so he can polish his crystal ball? <laughs> because he is, it's just not working, his future scene. Remember when he said that, that he was gonna win round three? That, yeah. That didn't happen. Didn't didn't pan out. Didn't that didn't pan out. You are. Didn't I am happen. so proud of you. You have had such great pulls today. I I love your energy. I love how relaxed you are. You take it's freaking time. hurricaning outside. It's hurricaning out there. <laughs> so the worst thing that's going to happen today is, you know, Frankie's going to lose a match and your house is going to blow away. It's fine. <laughs> uh, you're going to win. And I can't wait to scream in your face when <laughs> you do. Have right. fun. In the best Just way. stay right where you are, sis. You are exactly where you need to be. All right. So the, excuse me, sudden death is about to begin. Frankie, are you ready? Yep. Jess, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Here's question number one. 
Adam Driver, David Oyelowo, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Tim Blake Nelson have roles in which Spielberg film? Spielberg film? Ooh. Five. My answer Four. is my repeat on the first repeat. one. <laughs> Two, repeat, okay. Yep. Adam Driver, David Oyelowo, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Tim Blake Nelson have roles in which Spielberg film? I was with you until you said Spielberg. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, pen, hands up. And we start with Frankie. Is it Bridge of Spies? And Jess? War Horse. Lincoln. Lincoln. Ah. Lincoln, so both miss. And Mark, now we get to the second question here. The second question. That's right. Good guesses by both competitors, Christian. They're just, you know, wasn't right. But but good guesses <laughs> from both. And so now we move on to your next question. And it is, who played Alma Beers Del Mar, Heath Ledger's wife, in the film Brokeback Mountain. You know what, baby? I'm, I think it's one of those movies I need yeah, to see. Christian, even though they're not rookies, that I avoided a competition like this, not new to them. Just, no, at all. You know, and five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, and Jess. Michelle Williams. And Frankie. Michelle Williams. Both correct. As we get to our next question, here is our next question. All right. The great Kali made his big screen debut in what 2005 Adam Sandler sports film? Neither competitor seems phased oh, in the slightest. Yes. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And Frankie? The longest, the longest yard. yard. And Jess? Happy Gilmore. And Frankie Alvarez and the longest yard. They take the victory in sudden death. Two big fights with Frankie Alvarez as he goes with Lomas and now with the sleeper and finds himself the winner. 2019 suspects picking up two big points here and it was a stressful one. Gentlemen, congratulations and we'll see you in Look just- Look at Sam, he's nervous. All right, so both competitors, sudden death, three questions i believe into it and yep. it, it was um it was a battle from the second it started in the first round sloth just would not go quietly into the night and kept on fighting until finally at the end there uh frankie alvarez pulls the longest yard wins the match and that was a uh, that was a really good match yeah, and you think about that run of Adam Sandler sports movies that we got. I mean, it could have been Happy Gilmore. It could have been The Water Boy. You think The Longest Yard. And so a tough question there that Frankie the Animal Alvarez was all over. And when you look at the youth and the knowledge, Christian, that combination. Look, when I was their age, I probably knew more about movies than I do now. But I don't think I could have pulled a lot of those questions, answers, because whew, the yes. writer tested them. And I'd say both competitors passed the test with Frankie Alvarez, the animal, getting the W. All right. Well, now we are going to hear from Frankie Alvarez and Sam Levine as they are with Jillian Marie, who is going to be talking to the winners. Here we are. Congratulations, Frankie. You are coming in this as a rookie with a 2-0 record. How is it feeling after that win today? You know, Sam, did you did you take the time to polish that crystal ball? Did you, you? know I did. I don't know what Kate I, is thinking. I paid a fortune for that crystal ball. A nice spit shine. A nice spit shine and mwah, came out beautiful, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, I feel great, Jill. Thank you for, for being here. Thank you for the question. I feel great. Uh, I am amped. I am pumped. I probably woke up my sleeping infant daughter upstairs, but I don't care because I'm 2-0 and oh in the movie trivia showdown. And that's awesome. And let's talk about that match for a second. Um, 
that first round, Stardust, Golden Compass, what was going through your mind during that question? Listen, 2007, there were a lot of other things on uh, the animal's mind than Stardust and good old Charlie Cox. And, uh, uh, you know, so I always confuse those two movies. Uh, if there was a wheel slice just for those two movies, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> uh, but guess what? I'm not. Uh, you know, I, I was sitting there going back and forth. I believe she used her repeat, and I was like, maybe, and then... I just didn't pull it. Uh, I'm a perfectionist, you know, and I, I was a little frustrated. But at the end of the day, I, I had to shake it off and move forward because there was no leeway to, to miss a step against my opponent today. And Sam, I do have a question for you. Um, how much are your rates for palm readings? Because it looks like that crystal ball is indeed right. working today. For you guys, they're only $10. For Kate, it's $1,000 because <laughs> I'm not here. If you're not in, I don't want, don't waste my time. Do you see uh, anything now, in my palm? I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Jill. Do you see I, anything in my palm? I just see a couple of belts in there, but we can get oh. to that another time. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, we are two and no. So How many belts if he's only playing in future, But uh, both Sam and Frankie, overtime. Were we expecting that? Uh, what, what were the nerves going on going into overtime? You know, look, I don't want to say we were expecting it, but we're never not expecting it. Okay, uh, as 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 Frank said before, we prepare for every match as if we're facing a Dan Merle. So it's all about knowing where you are in the match and knowing what you need to do to get to the next spot in the match. And you heard me say it only a couple times, we never trailed in that match. No matter what Kate wants to say, we never trailed in that match from start to finish. And that is all I can ask for from any one of the suspects. And Frank did not disappoint. Frankie? I mean, listen, I knew I had to bring my game. Uh, the sleeper, I mean, uh, it, it seems like no one was expecting uh, uh, the match to go, you know, as far as it had gone, you know, into overtime. And uh, I knew I needed to, uh, you know, after seeing how she did round one, round two, round three, I knew I needed to just not miss. I needed to make sure I was doing everything I could to. Uh, but it got a little it got a little late over there for the sleeper and it might be past her bedtime because she did have to end up going to sleep in the end. And and who'd have thought, oh, Frank, you watch all this wrestling. Is that gonna do you any good? <laughs> Eat your heart out. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Rick the Rage Erratus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Triple that R. Elephant mm. in the room. Someone's been calling you out a bit. You're now two and oh. Do you have anything to say to the Rager? Listen, uh, this ain't the first time I've seen an internet weirdo try to come for me. Uh, I showed the world what would happen no when Brother Lomas came up against me. And, I mean, look at me now. And, uh, Rager, you better hope, you better hope and pray that you start living that lifestyle, bud. Because I've been a Rager way before you were even a thought, okay? So, it, you better be prepared. You better be ready. And if you're going to talk that talk, you better walk that walk, boy. Because I'm coming full force at you. And I'm hungry. He's hungry. He's hungry for your rager. Thanks so much, guys. Awesome match. Awesome match. Uh, can't wait to see you soon. Thank you. Back to you guys Thanks, at the Jillian. desk. Thank you, Jillian. Hey! And thank you to and Craig. Congratulations to both. It's Frank. an animal, Christian. You get it? It's an animal. <laughs> That's a good move. Um, which one? So with that, I will say uh, what a match it was. And obviously, Frankie Alvarez has had his mind set on the rager. Well, now he might just get what he wants. They're both 2-0, but he had to earn it here today. Jessica Schloth putting up a hell of a fight, and we are going to see exactly how she is feeling with Kate Mulligan, who is who are with Jillian. Jillian? Jessica, Kate, things didn't, Just like, I, I, that crystal ball, I mean, <laughs> what what can I say about that crystal ball? <laughs> it wasn't right. He said they were going to win in round three. Also, when he keeps talking about, like, we never trailed in this match. If you look at the round two score on its own, he only got five in round two and she got six. So, yeah, okay. She, she didn't technically like the score. Yeah, I mean, round, yeah. But also, like, he, he, he was earned less in round two. So look at the round two score. Uh, that's a one, trail. One point that's a lead. sad trail. And they were tied going into round three. Now, so Jess, after that match, know, it, math. it was a neck and neck. You guys were fighting it back and forth. It was him and then you and then tied and then overtime. Yeah. What was going through your head when you realized, oh my gosh, I'm going into overtime? <laughs> well, yes, the when it, we were going into round three and the math and it was tied. And I was like, oh, I know, like, this could happen. And I was, like, kind of half expecting it. So I was just trying to stay, like 
calm and in the pocket the whole time, you know? Um, to be honest, that last question, don't know who that person was that they were asking for, so uh, maybe it's someone said it was a wrestler, I, I guess. Yeah, that's I why. think. I don't... Yeah, it was the giant guy. Hey, you must be <laughs> really proud of how the... Jess played yes, today. Yes, I did watch the movie, by the way. Not a WWE today, but she just played just amazing. Just were wondering. Able to go into overtime today. How are you feeling Sorry about the, the gameplay from The Sleeper? I'm, Long story, I'm don't ask. so impressed because, first of all, she knows so much more than I do. <laughs> and I just feel like she had such deep pulls today. And I feel like her composure is something that, like, I really admire. I just feel like she stayed calm. And to be able to, your second match in Schmote, like, as, in the Schmodown, and you take it to OT, I don't care. I mean, trailing, Peggy not did trailing, the same. I, That was, she put up Against a the Rager. And I've said this so many times. Uh, the way the Dennis uh, fighting sometimes the, the W for me, yes, I understand there's two points on the line here, but like the W for me is the way that Jess conducted herself today. And I feel like <laughs> you can look at like, you can look at this match and see how the future is going to be great with her. And so to me, this was a W for us. I know we're not getting the two points. Meh. Like uh, yeah. to me, seeing how I mean, solid way of ahead she's, of the how solid Frankie heads. was and she went up against it so, by the way Frankie on behalf of your spouse how dare you wake up the infant <laughs> uh, we're all very mad about that <sighs> I'm on the phone with them. Um, but he's the <laughs> one that's going to be losing in the future that, I'll tell you what Frankie took I mean, me out in that household tonight I'll tell you that <laughs> right now um, but I, I just I'm excited hey. about Jess and I know how hard she works and I know that she has the support of everybody on our faction and that, that you know all of them were so excited checking in with like she's murdering these sessions she's that you know so to me this wasn't an owl this was a w like for truly looking into the crystal ball of jess's future here this is this is one road bump on a really beautiful uphill climb and we are you know i'm, I'm so thrilled that she's on the den that's beautiful. And you bring this amazing presence when you play too it went into overtime a whole, extremely stressful situation and you're you're the sleeper for a reason. You were calm. You were cool. You were collected. You were like that little sloth uh, stuffed animal you have in the back there. So it was perfect. It's always a joy to watch you play. And now you have got, have two matches under your belt. You have a win. You have an overtime in your belt now. Guess What's next perfect, for you in this league, league? And what do you want to do? I mean, I would definitely love to play again. Um, but for now, I'm definitely going to continue to support everyone else in our faction and always be in there with the studying and then I will learn in that process too and I'll be even better in my next match so yeah <laughs> perfect let's keep that mentality for the next one Kate Jessica thank you so much I'm excited to see you play again uh Christian Mark back to you at the desk kind of love the attitude by the sleepers where she I mean and how are you how could you not be proud of this she's she's in there she makes it to the sudden death and she gets a question she just didn't know so that happens it happens to a, a lot of great competitors and she, i loved her answer well it just means i want to play again and now i'm going to root on the faction so it was a great match by the sleeper but the animal takes the victory he takes the win and now he finds himself at two and oh and that is good and that is what the suspects needed as frank said it before the suspects are have are, are they are looking up right now at everybody they need to start to catch up and this is a great way to start doing it because frankie alvarez starts to put himself you get to two and oh great you get to three and oh then you start moving up just a little bit more and this is going to be something if him and the rager do wind up clashing yeah, I mean, that's another way to gain points for your faction and get your faction up there in the standings is to call people out or maybe in this case, respond to people calling you out or just have a war of words until there's no choice but to have these two people clash in a matchup. That's what Frankie the Animal showed us here today. Is Radis going to be ready? And on the other side of it, Christian, you look at Schloth, I think competitors watch this match and she might have gotten the loss in overtime, but I don't think a lot of them want to see her across from them on the question desk because she is one formidable opponent in her young career. So two really promising rookies here with a bright future in the Schmodown ahead of them. And speaking of bright futures, it's great to see Jillian Marie here. Congrats to Jillian. She's a great, great force job. in the community and happy to have her on the show today. 
Check out her show, Certain Point of View. They're on every Sunday on YouTube. So make sure you go and check them out. Great show for uh, everything you want. You want to find out what's going on in the match? I guarantee you they're going to be talking about this. They'll probably be reacting to it, considering that she is going to be in it. It's a great show. Molly Damon uh, is also on the show. So please go and check that out. All right. So, Mark, that was the match. It was a great match. Very excited to see these two rookies really bring it. Uh, congratulations once again to the suspects. And congrats to you, buddy. We did it again. Oh, well, thank you. I was going to say, from any point of view, this was a top-notch match from two worthy competitors and two pretty good managers, and I would have neither one of them ever touch my palms, so don't ask. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for our great team behind the scenes and to our competitors and to Jillian Marie for helping us out on the desk today. So we will see you guys very, very soon. Peace out. That's it. That's all I got for you. Peace out, guys. Okay, um, well, guess I'm gonna start, have to start giving the animals some respect, but, you know, Jessica played her heart out, and that's really all I can say about this match, because, uh, she did great, she did, definitely did a lot better than I ever would, if I was, uh, playing in singles, and, uh, I mean, she had great pulls in round three, you misses obviously but then again so did Frankie and uh, yeah she, she was able to go uh, three rounds in um, sudden death can't overlook that I got 10 points by the way which is about half as many points as Frankie the Alvarez and somehow I messed up there but yeah I got about half and as much points as uh, Frankie did so uh, I'm pretty proud of myself Again, you all got to consider upon, uh, um, sudden death. Why Why can't I pull my words today? In any case, a uh, great match from both of these. And uh, can't wait to see Jessica come back. Uh, probably won't happen uh, for a while now in this, in this season because there are so many other competitors uh, this season. But it was a great match and I really enjoyed uh, watching and reacting to it. Speaking of reactors, obviously. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's really all I can say for now, and I will see you all in the next match, which I might end up recording immediately after this one. I'll just have to wait and see how my, uh, how my, uh, tiredness and consciousness kind of match up with each other. See you in a bit. Hello again, everybody! I really hope you enjoyed this video, because I really enjoyed making it. So, if you like what you've seen here, Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more awesome content like this. So, until next time, guys, I'll see you guys next time.